today. Thank you for the Sabbath. And just thank you for the beautiful weather that you are showing us, the leaves changing, the, the crisp air. Just thank you for just another day to draw closer to you. And I just want to lift up the small groups, Lord. Whether it's Tuesday night, the best night of Wednesday night, or Thursday night, or the women's group, or house meetings that go on in the house, where, where two or more are present, you are there, Lord. And we did, whether we're at a group or not, as long as we're with another person, you're present and we can turn that into a group. So I just ask that you continue to bless any meeting or gathering between anyone in this community and just mm -hmm. let it shine, shine for your glory and just continue to work the mission of bringing people closer to you. Just continue to grow with you and love you each and every day in your heavenly name. Yeah. Father, I, uh, I just lift up the houses to you and the men in the houses. I just, uh, I just pray for the bond and the unity and the, the community in each house um, to grow stronger and stronger, Lord. That these men would feel safe, that they would feel comfortable, Lord. That they would be able to work on the things that you're working out in them be able to do that and unify with the, the other men around them. Uh, we also pray for the men that are just not here yet. And we just ask that you continue to soften their hearts and open the door for them to come here. Lord, I, uh, I pray for uh, another new house when we need it. Lord, I just pray that, uh, that you would open up the door, the, the finances, the, the, the person that wants to rent it to us, Lord, and you just open that door so that we can get another five to six men into this ministry for you to, to speak to them and work in their lives. And, uh, Lord, I thank you for this ministry and we just uh, lift up those houses to you and the men in them, in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, thank you for this church. Thank you for the opportunity to meet. Lord, thank you for the congregation and, and all that, uh, that assembled to, to learn more about you, to glorify you, their time, their, their talents, and their treasures, Lord. We, uh, we thank you for the, the gracious opportunity that Parker Presbyterian has given us, Lord, to, to meet here, Lord, and um, uh, we thank you for such a great ministry. Lord, as we, uh, we invite you in a big way to be here, Lord, as we, uh, we receive the word from PT and you, Lord, that you would uh, you would open our ears and, and open our hearts, Lord. We, uh, we love you and we thank you for the Sabbath. It's in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 If everybody would turn to uh, Matthew 6, 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Amen. Amen. Thanksgiving time. Mm -hmm. And today, in listening to the thanks, it, it reminds me of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, which tells us that we have been given a ministry of reconciliation. Amen. That is a blessing, my friends. And this is a this is a ministry here that is all about reconciliation. I hear it in all the things. Families come back together through Staff 7. And I just am very thankful for that. And this morning, I want to start, and I do this quite often, I want to ask you all a question. I believe
believe that it's a wonderful way to teach is by asking questions. And today's question is, it's really a deep question. Okay, there's, there's a lot here. Okay. You're going to have to contemplate before you give me an answer. <laughs> And some of you right now are saying PT's messing with us. <laughs> and you're right. Because I do have a question, but it's it's very shallow, okay? But it's very pertinent to the message today. I want to ask you all, how many of you made your bed? Huh? Ooh, look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Huh? Dennis, you had someone make it for you. We'll uh we'll get back to that. Okay, we'll come back to making our bed. A few weeks ago I started up a, a three-part series and I kind of blew it. I, I, I didn't remember that I wasn't going to be in the pulpit for two weeks. Kirk <laughs> preached and, mm -hmm. and Mike preached and I started it right before that. So this three-part series will get done in a couple months. Okay. <laughs> uh, but it's an important three-part series. It's all about things that we need to do as Christians. Things that we need to do well. And a couple weeks ago, I started off, and this is kind of tough. The first topic was we need to suffer. learn to suffer well, mm -hmm. folks. That's a tough one. We need to suffer well. Today, the topic is we need <coughs> to finish. Finish well. Finish strong. And then finally next week, and this is probably the most important of all, it's one of our values here at Step 7, it's we need to love well. Okay. We need to be very loving around here, and I think we do a wonderful job of that. I, I stand in the back of the church, and I, I hear the laughing, and the... <laughs> it, we're, we're very loving around here. We're gonna put we're gonna put our old rule back in place here, you guys. If your phone goes off, it costs you five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> we used to do that around here. If your phone goes off, you can put five bucks in the offering. Box. Okay, so thank you, Bert. <laughs> And I will tie this in, but the little prayer that I'm talking about is simply, today I choose Jesus, and all is well. If we continue to say that, we will be able to suffer well. We will finish everything well that we start. Today I choose Jesus. And all is well. I want to tell just a real quick story, and it has to do with my, my buddy Russ over here. I went over to Russ's house, I'm terrible with times. It was a couple months ago. And Russ was in his garage, and he was, he was doing some woodwork there. And I, I asked him, I said, Russ, what are, you, what are you making? And he just said, oh, I'm just, I'm making a plaque, PT, and that's all he said. So I just kind of dropped it. <laughs> And then about a week or two later, before Sabbath school, Russ said, PT, come here, you, you need to come out to, my, out to my Jeep. I've got something for you. And so we went out there, and Russ gave me this. And I absolutely 
love it. And he said, this is for you, P.T. And it says, and surely I am with you always unto the end of time. Mm. Matthew 28. Amen. And this is one of the verses for one of our steps here at step seven. And I, I just, I love this thing. Amen. This, this is a meaty piece right here, but I, I absolutely love it. So a couple weeks later, I thought to myself, I want Russ to make another one of those for me. And I knew he would. So I, I got in touch with him and I said, Russ, I've got this little prayer that I say on a daily basis. Today I choose Jesus, and today, and all is well. And he, he said, I'll, I'll get on it. And I thought, wow, that's great. A couple days later, he called me up and he said, PT, I want to change that just a little bit. What do you think of this? He wanted to add two words to it. He said, how about if we put, today I choose Jesus, and today, those were the two words he wanted to add. Today I choose Jesus, and today all is well. And he said, PT, we're always talking at Step 7 about guys, people being in the moment, staying present. Yes. Quit regretting the past, quit fearing the future, stay here. He said, this really drives it home, that we need to stay present. And I said, let me pray about it, and I'll get back to you. I called him back a couple days later, and I said, Russ, I, I just absolutely love that. Mm. Today I choose Jesus, and today all is well. This last week, he came over to my house. Now, this first one was nice, but this one is over the top. I absolutely love this. Look at that. Today I choose Jesus, and today all is well. well. Amen. talking a little bit about it. I'm not sure where we're going to go with this, but we've been talking about maybe producing a few of these and selling them and using them to help finance the ministry. Awesome. Okay, so if you're interested in one of these, let me know. Can't have this one. This one's mine. <laughs> okay? But isn't that beautiful? That's gorgeous. I mean, that is just beautiful. Russ, Thank you very much. Amen. Let's, let's go ahead and have another prayer. Father God, I just want to thank you for this moment. I want to thank you for this ministry. I want to thank you for my friends. And hopefully, Lord, in a few minutes, I'm going to thank you for using me today. So please, speak through me. Help me to get out of the way. Speak through me. Use me, Lord. And we just thank you and we love you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we are to, to finish well, guys. And I want to look at that in, in three parts today. I hope and pray that we will finish in the small things, the micro, the little things that we start today. We're going to finish them strong. So we're going to finish well in the micro. On the flip side of that coin, we're going to finish well in the macro, the big picture. A day's coming when our time is going to be up, my friends. And I want us all to finish well. And I can tell you, if you finish well in the micro, if you finish well today, that will all fall into place for you. You will finish well in the big picture. So we want to finish well in the little and the big. And then the third part is I simply want to ask you the question. When you're 
getting involved in something, when you do something. And the question is, did you do your best? Mm -hmm. Did you give 110%? And if you didn't, why did you even get started? We want to finish well. And when we talk about the micro, I can go right back to our verse of the day. 634 in Matthew, it says, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So stay here. Right here, right now, is where life happens, my friends. We want to finish well in the little things. Did you make your bed this morning? <laughs> you can't finish well, my friends, if you don't start well. <laughs> okay? Let's finish well in the, in the little things. Turn with me, just to your right, not too far, to 2 Timothy. <coughs> And this is finishing well in the macro. <clears throat> Second Timothy chapter 4. And this is Paul. And he's writing this second letter to his buddy, his young protege, Timothy. And Paul is writing this from prison. And Paul's time is about done here. Okay? Look at 2 Timothy 4, verse 6. It says, For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. <coughs> Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. <coughs> Excuse me. So, we see Paul here, and he understands that his days are numbered. It says right out of the gate, the time has come for my departure. But I want you to notice something about him here. Notice his attitude. He says in verse 7, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Paul is completely confident in his future. It's called, my friends, it's called assurance of salvation. Paul has this wonderful relationship with Christ. He knows what his future holds. And what is he doing here? He is finishing strong. Amen. Amen. And I hope and pray that all of you will come to a point or are at a point where you know that a day is coming when the good Lord's coming to take you home. And if you don't know that, talk to me. That's my job, folks, is to help you recognize your salvation. We want to finish well in the micro, we want to finish well in the macro. Paul says here, I have kept the faith. And you know what it tells me about Paul? He has absolutely no regrets. Wouldn't that be nice? To live our days with no regrets. Amen. And if you start something today, and you make a commitment that I'm going to finish this well today, tomorrow, <coughs> you will have no regrets. Mm -hmm. And that's how we want to live our lives, okay? No regrets. I, 
I ask again, did you do your best? And one thing, and I'm kind of, I don't want to sound boastful here, but I'm very happy about a particular thing here at, at Step 7. We work with a, an organization, I shouldn't say we, I should say Ben works with an organization by the name of CAR. And that's a, that's a governmental <coughs> organization here in Colorado, CAR. And it's, it's C-A-R-R. -R. It's the Colorado Association of Recovery Homes. And we are licensed. We are certified through CAR. Step 7 Homes are. And a couple months ago, one of the main guys got in touch with us because they come and inspect us and talk to us every year. And I told him to meet me at the Matzenbacher house. And my whole plan was just, I'm just going to give them to Ben, which I did. They came over, there were two of them. They met with Ben, I introduced him, and I left. Ben answered all their questions. And then he took them out to look at a couple homes, didn't you, Ben? All of them. All of them. Seriously? Oh, I thought you just went to a couple. Okay. The cool thing about it, though, Ben spent the day with them. I was completely confident in Ben handling them. At the end of the day, they told Ben, and they would know. They, they're, they work the whole state. They said that your homes at Step 7 are the best sober living homes in Colorado. Amen. And they also said they're not just the best homes, your prices are better than anything out there. And that makes me, and I don't like the word, but that makes me pretty proud. Mm -hmm. um, we have, we have done everything that we can to make our homes the best. Amen? Amen. Amen. Good Amen. stuff. There's a couple of verses that are almost, you don't need to go there, they're almost word for word exactly the same. Colossians chapter 3, and we, we have another one in, in Ephesians 6. And it says basically, whatever you do, work at it with all of your heart, as if you were serving the Lord, not men. It says whatever you do, not most of the stuff that you do, whatever you do, do it as if you were working for the Lord, not men. That tells me, my friends, that I need to do my best. Amen. And I want to finish strong in the little, and I want to finish strong in the big. Mm -hmm. There's a wonderful book out, bestseller, came out quite a few years ago. It's called Good to Great. And Jim Collins is the, the author. And one of the wonderful lines that I took out of this book, is he says that the enemy of the best is oftentimes the good. It's like, wow. The enemy of the best is oftentimes the good. I don't want to just do a good job, my friends. I want to give it my best. Good can simply be an enemy of that, if I'm going to settle. Because yeah. that's what we do. We settle for the good when the best is out there. There's a, a wonderful book that is written. It's a, a, a New York Times bestseller. It's written by a Navy admiral. And I, he actually joined... And he, he became a Navy SEAL, and he was a SEAL his whole career. He retired as an admiral. You can bet this is a pretty tough old boy. Okay. 
an admiral in a Navy SEAL. And he wrote this book, and I, I picked it up, and the subtitle of it is Little Things That Can Change Your Life and Maybe the World. Little Things That Can Change Your Life and Maybe the World. And you know what the title of the book is? Make your bed. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter one is all about making your bed. Get up in the morning and get a task behind you and do a good job of it. Do your job. Do your work and do your best. No regrets, my friends. And it's kind of sad to say, but we're working through it here at Step 7. This isn't something that we, as men who have struggled with substance abuse, this isn't our forte, you guys. We aren't known by the world out there. Oh yeah, man, he'll, he'll do a good job for you. He'll finish it. We don't even know what it's like most of the time to finish, let alone finish well, okay? This is an important message. And again, I say, to finish well, you need to start well. Finish today. Finish the micro, and the macro will take care of itself. I, uh, I want to bring up my good buddy, and, and uh, Brandy already spoke about him. Everybody knows Phil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Phil lived at the Paoli house for years. Huh? That's right, Bobby. <laughs> Phil's an incredible man. He led the Paoli house up until he moved out and he, we turned it over to Joe, who's, who's not here today. But I remember meeting Phil. It was over at the, at the thrift store and he was in a bad place. And he moved into Paoli came into a relationship with Christ, was a wonderful leader, introduced us all to Brandy, who was mm -hmm. crying back then. <laughs> and he lived with us, I think, for about three years, didn't he? He lived at the Paoli house for three years, and one day he came up to me and he, he said, PT, I'm, I'm going to be moving out, and I always hate that. And I know it's a victory, but I hate to see you guys move out. But just what an incredible victory that was. And I told him so. I said, Phil, I can't tell you how proud of you I am. Amen. And the lives that you have touched through your home. But I want to tell you what Phil did that I will never forget. He had the room down in the basement. And the first thing he did is he cleared it out and cleaned it up. And I went and checked on it. He got all his stuff out of there and cleaned it up spotless. But without even telling me, Phil painted his room at step seven. Hmm. I've never seen that. He cleaned it up. He got spackled, took care of the holes in the wall, and he painted his Amen. My friends, that's what we mean when we're talking about finishing strong. Mm -hmm. mm. Let's focus on that. Let's finish strong today. Let's go to bed tonight and take a look at our day and ask ourselves, did I finish well today? Because tomorrow I want no regrets. And I have to finish at the cross today. Mm. Obviously, I have to finish at the cross. 
Jesus, folks, he gave his all. And so again, when I ask you the question, did you do your best? I hope the question or the answer is going to be, Pastor, I gave my best. Because if it's not, I'm simply going to ask you, why not? Why didn't you give your best? Mm -hmm. Jesus gave everything he had for us. My friends, he finished as strong as anything we've ever seen in the history of this world. My folks, we owe him nothing. Today I choose Jesus, and today all is well. Amen. Hallelujah. No regrets, my friends. Let's pray. Father God, I just want to thank you for this day. I especially want to thank you for this ministry. And Lord, I pray that you will convict all of us here today that it is your desire that we finish strong in the little things and in the big things, that we do our best. You gave us everything. Jesus, help us to remember that. And I just look forward to the future, Lord, because I know you love this little ministry. We're doing some wonderful things through you here at Step 7. I just pray for continued guidance and direction. Help us to know what it is that you would have us do next. And whatever that might be, Lord, instill upon us a desire to do our best. We just thank you, Lord. And we love you. And we pray this as we always do in that precious, precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hey everybody, thanks for coming. Do me a favor, we're going to get cleaned up real quick. We're going to vacuum and, and clean the place. We have a guest who's going to be talking to us. We'll give us about five or ten minutes, okay? And, and we'll get started there. Thank you all for coming today. Woo! Woo!